Welcome back. Harry and I are talking about BMW's incredibly exotic HP4 race, which I was lucky enough to get a go on at the Portuguese circuit of Estoril, which thankfully isn't quite as complex as the bike itself. Look, I mean, all this it sounds fantastic, but it sounds really complicated and really involved to manufacture. Are they set up for volume production? I mean, how many of these can they make a week, for example? Not many, I don't think. And again, because you've asked me a technical question, <laughs> let's cross over to Chris. We are, we are building three bikes a day in Berlin plant, uh, which doesn't mean that this is the final output of the uh, frame mold. Uh, we can produce a bit more each day, which means we already uh, did the big step. Normally you need one week or two weeks for, for hand laminated and handcrafted uh, mainframe for a motorcycle. Now we can produce several a day, uh, but at the end uh, you must look on the amount of bikes we build. So building up three bikes in Berlin plant each day means we, means we reach the level of 750 units uh, in total. And uh, the technology with our mainframe is not limiting. So for sure we can do a bit more frames than three. Uh, clear is also you cannot do 50 a day like you maybe can do in aluminium. That's all very interesting and obviously like making that carbon frame that's the limiting factor to how many they yeah. can manufacture but obviously wheels I mean they can just buy them off the shelf from BST can't they? You think so and we'd like them to but uh, that's not the BMW way and uh, without being to denigrating of other manufacturing processes they say that theirs is now superior not necessarily in terms of strength and how they behave really, it's just the consistency of the manufacturing process means that every wheel is exactly the same as a previous one, which with the handmade kind mm. of stuff, patchwork with carbon, it doesn't always work like that. So no, even they're in-house. Good grief. Let's talk about the heart of the machine, the engine. Oh, we're obviously not talking a standard S1000 RR engine. Here. So engine... They'll tell you that everyone makes a minimum, hand-built, remember, 215 horsepower, but, and you can imagine the ones at the uh, launch were like this, they reckon you're probably looking at 220, 225 for what the average engine will make. And how do they do that? Well, here's Christine again. The engine is uh, definitely a mixture of World Endurance spec and World Superbike spec, but the easiest way to understand the engine is you take a complete World Superbike specification engine of this year and you just take out uh, the valve train and the valve system to get the mileage on the engine. All other parts, internal and external, are 100% equal. So you really have a World Superbike specification engine just with a standard, let me say, optimized World Endurance World Championship uh, valve train system to get the mileage on 5,000 kilometers. Uh, in total, with, which means you can easily do a 24 hours race, which is the maximum race you can do, or you can do easily one season of sprint racing, like World Superbike or whatever, where you reach around about 4,000 kilometers each season. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? So there's no rebuilding the engine every second week. Uh, 5,000 K intervals, you've got your full endurance race, like he said, you've got a season of sprint races, or to be honest, most people who buy this are going to be wealthy individuals who use it for track day. And you're probably looking at a good two or three years or more before you need to service it. So really? 5,000 kilometers it's for actually, track days? It's, it's a kind of practical world superbike. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, which sounds a bit weird, but it is. Let's look at the suspension. I'm guessing... Best there is. I'm guessing Best that there is. It's just the best there is. <laughs> it's not standard Olin's. No, stuff, you see it? Olin's gold stuff on everything. The, these are literally World Superbike items. So uh, shock straight off a of World Superbike. Front, including the nickel coated uh, Brembo brakes, it's straight off a of World Superbike. So, I mean, the forks, if you wanted to, if they would even sell them to you, you're looking at about 200, 250,000 Rand for the forks up front, Jeez. a bit more with the brakes. It's incredible. What really impressed me is that obviously designed to work with. Jordi Torres on it, you know, mm. riding a factory BMW type of thing. Um, but they managed to cope with a slow old sweaty duffer as well. So <laughs> suspension these days is so impressive. You used to ride race bikes and they were just rock hard. Mm. Uh, now they're not, which makes riding it easy. I mean, I keep saying this thing is scary fast, which it is. It made my eyes wider than they've ever been. But it really is a breeze. That carbon makes it uh, easy to flick from left to right. The riding position, Rob wide handlebars is what you understand. It's an easy bike to ride. It's also an easy bike to scare yourself on, if you see what I mean. <laughs> well, in that case, if it's that easy to scare yourself, I'm guessing that probably the electronics 
are being, have been beefed up a bit as well. Yeah, this is this is stuff you can't see. It's not glamorous. It's not sexy. They're not gold fort legs. They're not amazing brakes. It's a little black box that sits mm. inside. It's, again, we're talking World Supers. Um, it's their 2D technology. Um, you've basically got all the buttons and stuff you would use on a full-on race bike. The traction control is is amazing. I never had the 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 bravery to try and test it too much. When you go like that, it should take care of you at most lean angles. So You didn't want to try that. Either. Yeah, again, Christian has got a, a better sort of idea of what's going on with the electronics and, and talks about something I really loved, which was the fact that uh, the traction control, which on the standard bike flashes at you to tell you it's working, on this they've engineered it so it bub, 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 you can hear it whenever oh, it's really? So you don't need to look at the dash, you hear the traction control working. <laughs> The target was that the rider feels uh, well on the bike and can concentrate 100% on his riding style and don't have to look on the on the screen, on the dash or whatever. So it was uh, quite uh, clear that we use audible traction control by ignition cut that he just opens throttle and hear it and has all his sensors, uh, his head in the right direction to look outside the corner, his uh, leg just uh, putting to the, to the fuel tank to get the, the, the grip he needs. So pure concentration on what you need acceleration, braking and looking and not uh, looking onto a dash always like this. So it was easy, we want to make uh, the rider feel happy and happy by feeling safe on the bike. Safe comes if you don't have to concentrate, just jump on and uh, relax. So make it noisy, make it audible and the rider can concentrate on the really important things on track. Now look, we keep talking about World Supers. Now, they're building 750 of these, which is obviously a, an homologation number. That's what I thought. Are we going to see these bikes in the World Supers then? No. No? No, and I didn't really understand, but homologate, it needs to be homologated as a road bike, so it needs the flickers and the lights and everything. Uh, which this doesn't have. Which this doesn't have, it's track only. So where, who can race this then? Well, club races here in South Africa. <laughs> now, look, the obvious place that doesn't have any rules, you can basically take a MotoGP bike if you want, is the Isle of Man. So what did BMW do? Well, gave it to Peter Hickman to, well, to do this on. He's braver than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Might be most people are. <clears throat> let's talk about practicalities. How many are coming to South Africa? And uh, let's. How much is it? It's not cheap. No. Really? No, it's not. Go on. It's 1.3 million rand. That's quite a lot, isn't it? And how many are coming over? Do you We've know? got eight in South Africa. They've all been sold. <laughs> However, since the production run is scheduled to go on later into this year, obviously until they're finished, there is a good chance given the demand that South Africa is going to get a, a few more units, so... So we could afford one? Well, look, that's what I want to say. If I could <laughs> afford one, no shadow of a doubt, I would have one as the ultimate track day bike. And it is literally the ultimate track day bike. It's, it's brilliant. It's the most amazing thing I've ever ridden. Look, Don had the Super Leggera, and I'm pretty sure that's damn close. Yeah. But this four-cylinder howling insane... Mate, I cannot understand how these dudes hang on to one for 45 minutes. Because you when suffered after it. three minutes. I did, no, genuinely. <laughs> and brave, and it, it's the most amazing piece of kit in the world. If you can get one and you can afford it, it's a no-brainer, do it. And it's one of those things that will just keep going up in value, really, won't it? I would imagine. You're not going to lose money. I think the most interesting thing to take from this, though, is the last point. This is a sign of things to come. This is BMW... Pointing the way to the future, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's unzipped its flies and shown it can pee further than any <laughs> other manufacturer. So, uh, after the willy waving contest, sort of, if you know what I mean, right. uh, it's just an indication of who knows, maybe we've got a carbon monocoque frame GS 1200 coming next year. I don't think we do, but you know what I'm trying <laughs> to say. We will see this technology on BMW bikes, I'm pretty sure, in the, in the near future. But in the even nearer future, after the break in fact, Don will be doing some work on his long-term bike, which should be interesting or disastrous.